In this episode, we are going to solve a problem on branch current analysis. So we have our problem which says find the current in all parts of the circuit. So we have a circuit given and we are to find the current in each of the branch. So we are going to make the analysis. This is quite simple once we follow the branch current analysis approach. So this is how we are going to solve it. So first we have to, as usual, assign current to each branch. So assign current or the symbols to each branch. To each branch. So first we know that the direction of the current is given in the circuit so first let's try to give names or symbols to the current i will prefer to call this current i1 so i1 and we will also see that at this node at this point this i1 is splitting into two so once it's split i'll call this current as i2 and you can call this current as I3, but what do we see? We can see that this current I3 is the same as I1 minus I2, right? Yes. So I1 minus I2 is for this current. And as I2 also gets to this junction, it is going to split into two. I'll call this part as I3. And this part is also the same as I2 minus I3. Is that right? Yes. When you use the KCL, you know that this is true. So let me call this junction as C and call this junction as what? D. So let's make the analysis if it is true. If I1, looking at the direction of the current, I1 is equal to I2 plus, suppose I call this I0. I naught, which is supposed to mean that our I naught is equal to I one minus I two. So this is what I am putting it in place of the I naught, I one minus I two. The same thing happens to at the node D, so that you understand why the current is this way. We can also call this. It divide itself into I three and let's say I prime. So that I can say that looking at the direction of the current, I2 is equal to I3 is leaving plus I, I prime is also leaving, which implies that our I prime is going to be I2 minus I3. So that's why I'm also putting I2 minus I3 in place of the I prime. I hope we get it. Okay, so now. We have our current defined. Everything is defined. So let's see how we can also do that. After we apply the current or the symbols to it, can we also help so that we can identify the possible nodes? So I can give names to or the point. I'll call here A, B. Let's call this C. And we can call here D, E, F, G, and H to help me get the loop. So now we have everything in place. The direction of the current symbols are assigned. We have the node identified. So let's apply KVL2. We have three nodes. This is node loop one. This is loop two and this is loop three so what do we do in loop one let's try to draw the diagram for loop one and apply our kvl so this is what the drawing is going to look like we have it this way and this over here we have our voltage source over here and it is closed like this. So this is our two ohm, and this is three ohms. The current flowing through this part is giving us 
I1 minus I2. And this current is giving us I1. Is that true? Yes, we have our 7 volts. So here, to apply the KVL, we know that the voltage drop across this resistor plus that should be equal to the entire voltage here. So let's try to write that. And we know that from Ohm's law, our V is equal to IR. So for the I1, which is going to be the resistance multiplied by the current one, plus the second one, which is the resistance three multiplying I1 minus I2, the current should give me the total voltage, seven. And when you simplify this, this is going to be two I1 plus three I1 minus three I2 should give you seven. So our final equation can be 5i1 minus 3i2 should be equal to 7. So I'll call this equation 1 for the first loop. Now we can consider the second loop, which is loop 2. Let's also draw the diagram for loop 2. So considering loop 2, what do we have? So loop 2 is also going to be this way, very simple. We have this resistor over there. We also have this over there. And we have another resistor over here. The same resistor over here. So this is our 2 ohm resistor. This is also 2 ohm resistor. We have 5 ohm resistor and our 3 ohm resistor. Let's look at how the current goes. The current passing through this is I2, and the current passing through this from the diagram is I2 minus I3. And the current passing through the 3 ohm resistor is also giving us I1 minus I2. So what is the current passing through this I2 or the 2 ohm resistor? Let's look at the diagram carefully. We want to take our time so that we can understand everything. So this is I1 minus I2. What is the current passing through that? This 2 ohm resistor. Looking at this node, you can see that this current is coming and this current is also coming. So definitely this current should leave, right? So we know the direction. This current is going to leave this way because Looking at here, this is how it's supposed to be. Even if you consider this part, yes, this part is coming, this part is coming, so this part is leaving. So at this node, let me clean some of them so that we can get it clearly. Like this. So at this part, at this junction, we can see that the current coming this way is I3. So I3 is coming, and this part is also coming as I2 minus I3. So the one leaving, how do we do the analysis? It's very simple. Let's call this one leaving as I prime. So we can see that I prime, which is leaving, is equal to the current coming I3 plus the current coming I2 minus I3. So this, you can see that this I3 will cancel this leaving I prime is equal to I2. So you can see that here, the current passing through is called I2. So we will give that name to this part as I2. Are we okay? So now we have loop 2 and all the current flowing through it. Let's try to make the analysis on how we can get an equation out of it. This is also very simple. So from loop 2, we know that the voltage drop across this resistor plus this resistor plus this resistor plus this resistor should be equal to 
the entire voltage source. And there is no voltage source in this, right? So we are going to equate it to what? Zero. Looking at loop one, we have a voltage source over here at seven. But loop two, we don't have it. So we are going to equate it to zero. So let's look at how we can do that. Pay attention. So in loop two, this let's start with this first five. So the five resistor multiplying the current passing through, which is I2, plus the second, which is 2. The 2 ohm multiplying the current passing through it, which is I2 minus I3, plus the third, which is also 2 multiplying the current passing through it, I2, plus the last one, which is 3 multiplying. Let's pay attention here before we go to here let's look here the direction of the current this is going this way yes this one is also moving in the same direction this is moving in the same direction but once we come to the 3 ohm this is opposing the direction we are moving all the currents they are moving in this way but this you can look from the loop one this current they were all moving in the same direction but here this three is opposing the direction of the chosen direction. Are you okay? So since it is opposing it, we are going to negate the current as negative three multiplying the current passing through it, I1 minus I2. And everything is equal to zero. The voltage is zero. Are you okay? So now this is now mathematics. We can expand this and get our equation out of it so when you expand this you are going to get an equation as negative 3 i1 plus 12 i2 minus 2 i3 equal to zero and this will be our equation 2 from loop 2 please pay attention to the direction of the current mostly they will all align themselves and be going through the same direction but once one is opposing the chosen direction you are going to negate it as in the case of this three and the current passing through it now we have one more loop to make analysis so this is our second equation and this is our first equation the number of loops is going to help you get the number of equation so let's look at the last loop and see how we are going to get it so now from loop three the third loop this is how the diagram is going to look like so we have our diagram this way our resistor is here the voltage source is also here. We have one resistor also here, and we close it this way. So this is 2 ohm, this is 10 volts, and this is also 2 ohm. From the diagram, this current is passing through this, we call it I3, and the current passing through this, this is I2 minus i3 so this is very simple we are also going to say the voltage drop here plus the voltage drop here should be equal to the entire voltage so once the analysis is clear we can move forward so i'll start with the two which is two multiplying the i3 as one plus another two multiplying the current i2 minus i Three should be equal to the 10 volts. So this, if we simplify it mathematics, that is going to give us negative 2 I2 plus 4 I3 should be equal to 10. So this is our third equation. So now we have the third equation also there. So we can get all our equations from so the first equation is 5i1 minus 3i2 equal to 7. 
that was our equation one and the equation two is negative three i one plus twelve i two minus two i three should be equal to zero this is our equation two and this is for equation three so now what do you see this is solving three simultaneous equations with three unknown unknowns which is i1 i2 and i3 your calculator is going to help you type in all the unknowns and it will give you the variables so from the simultaneous equation so we can solve equation one equation two and equation three simultaneously and after doing that we can see that our current i1 is going to give us two amperes and our current i2 is going to give us one ampere and current i is going to give us what three amperes are we okay so we have all this as the answers for what we are looking for so we can now draw the diagram again and look if we have some change in directions of the answers are we okay so now let me draw the diagram again so this is our diagram and let's assign the current this current was our i1 and looking at this our i1 is two amperes and we also saw that this current is our i2 and i2 is one ampere this current is our i3 and i3 is positive three so meaning they are positive the direction we chose are true let's look at this the current passing through the 3 ohm resistor it is also the direction of c which is we chose as i1 minus i2 so looking at this i1 minus i2 the current that will be 2 minus 1 and that is going to be 1 ampere and it is positive meaning that the direction is also true so the current here is also one amperes, which will make the node analysis here. The current two entering is equal to one living plus another one living, which is true. The current here we chose was I2 minus I3. So I2 minus I3 is going to be I2, which is one minus I3, which is three, giving us negative two amperes. And negative two means the direction we chose is in the opposite direction. So initially our direction was this way and it gave us negative. So meaning the original direction of this current should go up as that. So I2 minus I3 is two amperes. And this will make sense. So meaning the current two entering the node plus the current one coming should be equal to the current three living. And this will make a perfect analysis. So this is also I2, which is one ampere. Thank you for watching this episode and check out for the next episode. Subscribe to the channel, share, and let's see your comments.